All right, I'm back to make another video. This is Justin William Savoy. It is the month of December, early in the very beginning of December 2020. And I've just been putting out a bunch of videos, mostly on Orthodox uh, Christian spirituality. Um, put out a video on some Trappist monks. Um, just looking forward to getting more in depth into some of the books that are in my personal uh, library. And um, then I will resume also making videos with me actually on them talking to you, um, perhaps doing some more stuff on traditionalism. I am going to finish up the Evola and Bowden series. I definitely enjoy covering that material. Um, and that is much um, more aimed at the traditionalist or perennialist um, type of audience. I'm sure a lot of people can benefit from those guys. You know, and um, some of my thoughts on that is, you know, you don't have to agree with everything that a particular thinker believed in to um, benefit or learn something from them. I know that Evola himself has become somewhat of a, you know, a meme, so to speak, um, for many people. Um, and, um, you know, maybe Bowden, um, especially the speeches for the new right there um, that he was giving um, in the UK might um, kind of, that might be something that makes people stand offish. However, he has a lot of really great things to say, too. So I am going to resume the Ride the Tiger stuff and um, the Bowden uh, Western Civilization, uh, is it Strikes Back, Bites Back? Um, I'll continue to read that speech. You can watch that speech in the meantime on YouTube. And uh, here's someone else who has quite a bit of content on YouTube, um, Alan Watts. So let's kind of get into looking at this book, um, Alan Watts. In my own way, you may just think that I've taken horrible care of this paperback here. I think this is the second copy I've had of this. I read through the first one quite extensively. There's Alan Watts himself. Um, he was a Christian priest at one time, um, but this is him here. I think that's like a Zen or, um, yeah, I think a Zen priest's attire. I'm going to take this rubber band off that's holding this together. You can see it's quite knackered. Um, that is because I've taken this just about everywhere with me, and I've read this time and time again, which is strange because, yes, I've studied Watts' works. Um, I'm not that interested in him. Uh, you can really learn a lot, actually, from him himself on um, YouTube by watching videos of him and teachings that he gave. A large part of my interest in him is his involvement and in following um, by the counterculture. Um, I would say especially in the East Bay, amongst a lot of the spiritual seekers there, and onward. And there's even videos of him later on in his life that are pretty interesting. Him hiking along, smoking his pipe, tobacco pipe, and discoursing about his life. Um, so... Uh, a lot of my interest also in Watts is in connection with Father Seraphim Rose and his works. Father Seraphim Rose is definitely someone I would invest in reading his writings and learning more from and coincides a lot more with my worldview and interests. Obviously, this book resonated with me, and I think it's just a lot of the people he encounters and the different um, things along his journey. And I think I may have found this book very... Um, encouraging to a person such as myself um, who thinks in a particular way and has a lot of um, different broad interests. I will be discussing more of those interests. Uh, I just wanted to turn on the light there. I keep it a little bit um, kind of low lighting around here um, just to kind of create a more serene um, environment. Um, so what was I going to say? Oh yeah, I'm going to resume talking about more literature beyond just Christian literature. So, um, don't worry there. I'm going to cover a lot of different stuff. And I think that's what I like a lot about Watts is his, um, variety of interests. This I carried around backpacks, took to do labor work with me. 
um, move from place to place to place and read again and again and again. And I think it's just a lot of the literary references and references of different people, philosophers, thinkers, and um, just the different experiences he went through in his own life. Uh, like I said, I've read fairly limited amount of Watt's works themselves, and they could never really draw me in, but his autobiography um, did. <clears throat> so it's missing this page here. Writing on a typewriter. Now acquired typewriter and often an evening spent in composite on. He would come down and ask us to hear the discussion of that he had written. I have, of course, read with great enjoyment all of his books. So he's talking about someone else here. Um, finally, he has done perhaps more than any other writer to open the eyes of the West to spiritual significance of Eastern religions and philosophies. Is this the introduction? Yes. Okay. Lawrence W. Watts talking about um, Alan Watts. Alan shows the way by his courtesy and open-mindedness. Questions intended seriously are answered seriously, and no questioner is ever made to look or feel foolish. I have no doubt that such consideration, especially when it is extended to a youthful inquirer, accounts largely for the interest taken in his philosophy by the young people of America. Obviously, this is a reader's copy, so I had no problem um, marking it up. It's kind of personal to reveal the marginalia that I've written in. I used to not really write in books, but those are more books that were in like pristine um, condition. However, um, later on, after studying more Mortimer Adler and how to read a book and how to mark a book, I got more into it, especially with readers' copies. That's kind of what they're for. If you want to keep other books that are like antiquarian in a book collection, then you could do that separately. But you can really benefit from annotating. And marginalia, I've had some really neat books that I've read some amazing marginalia that different scholars have written. Um, so let's read some of my little notes on this. Watt's initial thought or title for this book was Coincidence of Opposites, but the publishers rightly thought it too highbrow and moved me to search for something more simple and direct that would convey the spirit and the style in which I tried to live. So I've always done things in my own way, which is at once the way that comes naturally to me, that is honest, sincere, genuine, and unforced, but also perverse. Although you must remember that this word means perv, per, per, through, and verse, poetry, out of the way and wayward, which is surely towards the way at which to be queer, to follow your own weird, is wholeheartedly to accept your own karma or fate or destiny, and thus to be Odd in the service of God, whose service, as the Anglican Book of Common Prayer declares, is perfect freedom. God's service, perfect freedom. Here's, I'd write different things. Read this for the second time, December 5, 2016. Read again, December 2018. I don't know what I crossed out there. <clears throat> I thought... I had no business writing an autobiography because I had been a sedentary and contemplative character, an intellectual, a Brahmin, a mystic, and somewhat of a dis disreputable Epicurean who has had three wives, seven children, and five grandchildren. I cannot make up my mind whether I am confessing or boasting, but I have not fought in wars, explored mountains and jungles, battled politics, commanded great business, corporations, or accumulated vast wealth. It seems to me, therefore, that I had no story to tell, as the world judges stories, but two women absolutely insisted that I write this tale. The first is my publisher, Paula Van Doren. I think um, that must be his, uh, the wife of Charles Van Doren. I'm not quite sure. Um, McGuire, who has watched over the whole project, my second wife, Mary Jane Yates, hereafter known as Jano, who worked... Out with me every detail of taste of grammar, spelling, and punctuation. And that was this was written April 1972, so that's like three years before I was born in 75 in Hayward, California. Forward, preface, prologue, the stoned wood, tantum religio. I go to the Buddha for refuge on being half miseducated. My own university, dawn in the western sky. The Sunwise Turn, Paradox Priest, Interlude, Journey to the Edge of the World, Beginning a Counterculture, Other Selves, 
Breakthrough, The Soul Searchers, The Sound of Rain. My own way. No linear, non-linear view of time is one of the notes that I wrote. As I am also a you, this is going to be a kind of book that I would like you to write for me. It is going to be a the linear dimension since I do not subscribe to the chronological and histrological illusion that events follow one another or on a one-way street in series. We think about them in that way because that is how we have decided to write and speak. And thus, if I am to communicate with you in words, I must give you a line. And you must follow this string of letters. But of course, the world itself isn't strung out. It exists in many dimensions. I have then a preface for books that I can open at any place and begin to read. Books like a garden in which I can roam. And not like a tunnel maze of super highway where I must enter at a point A and come out at a point Z. This will not be such the history as the mystery of my life. And I write it neither to edify you nor to justify myself, but to entertain both of us. Sounds good. I got a little fortune here. A bold and dashing adventure is soon in your future. Oh my. All right. Let's see. So see here, there's a lot of literary references, some familiar, um, some not, but it's a great way to kind of uh, get ideas for other materials to read. I know that that's something that I really, really liked about reading this autobiography. A lot of sayings, quotes, uh, different schools of thinking and philosophy and religion. Philosophical, theological, psychological, apologia pro vita sug. Ultimately, of the course, he is wrong, for to be or not to be is not the question since the two states manifest each other. How would you know that you are alive unless you had once been dead? Thus, I am fascinated with almost every, with all religions, so long as their followers do not try to convert me. A Jesuit father, much as I respect some of those gentlemen, or a Theravada Buddhist monk. Everyone to his taste, but why fight about it? Because it isn't that important. Do you suppose that God takes himself seriously? I know a Zen master, Joshu Sasaki, who has let it be known that the best form of meditation is to stand up with your hands on your hips and roar with laughter for ten minutes every morning. I have heard of a sophisticated shaman-type fellow who used to cure ringworm on cows by pointing at the scars and laughing. Truly religious people always make jokes about their religion. Their faith is so strong that they can afford it. Much of the secret of life consists in knowing how to laugh and also how to breathe. A failure of our schools is that their departments of physical education teach only mechanical and mathematic versions of body play. Because they were educated in the same system, do not know how to transform money into physical enjoyment. They were never taught how to husband plants and animals for food, how to cook, how to make clothes and build houses, how to dance and breathe, and how to do yoga and find one another's truth center, or how to make love. The establishment is a class of physical barbarians. Consider simply the dowdy and scrubby masculine dress and appearance of Mr. Nixon, Mr. Heath, Mr. Kosoigen, M. Pompido, Pompido, and a last emperor of Japan who affects the absurdities of Edwardian formal dress. Jansenist Catholic, Ali, Ak Ali, Ali, Ali Akbar, Elgar, Dylan Thomas, Quen Yin of a Thousand Arms, the Bodhisattva of Compassionate Skill, forever trying to show sentient Oedipus Complex. There's just a lot here, a lot of fun stuff and references, and it kind of keeps you... I don't know, this must just be something that appeals to my mind. Like I said, I've just read it many times. You can look at the book, it's pretty well-worn. Good book, Scott, Thackeray, and Dickens. These details are given for the satisfaction of my many friends who believe in astrology and primitive science, which is correct in theory, but inexact and unworkable in practice. Obviously, 
who and what you are is where and when you are in relation to the whole universe. But the map or horoscope is not the territory, or should I say that the celestial heaven is a big subject. So um, a lot of people might not know by the content I've um, posted thus far, but I am very interested in hermeticism and um, Gnosticism and um, um, magic and those things. I don't practice those things. As I said, I identify in my worldview um, as a Christian person. However, I've been interested in esoteric stuff in conjunction with other metaphysical interests for a long time. Um, so that's maybe part of the draw here. But yeah, he mentions Big Sur, California. A tobacco and barber shop. Just some of the stuff that I underlined. I don't know what I was thinking at the time. It's pretty interesting. I'm talking about Yggdrasil of Norse mythology. I don't understand why those who have neither time nor skill for real gardening shouldn't just let their land go its own way, rather than insisting on law and order whereby grass is forced to imitate a billiard table. Which I think that's pretty funny. Food, not lawns. <coughs> Confirmed bachelor. Okay, yes. I'm showing off my knowledge of folk entomology. My father was an amateur entomologist and his guru in pursuit was an extremely small, affable, and intelligent bon vivant named Samuel Blythe, a well-to-do solicitor, stockholder in the Bank of England, and a confirmed bachelor who lived with his splendidly witty mother and two devoted serving maids. <laughs> I, I like his uh, writing style. Greco-Latin, polyphemus, photograph, and then color instead of... Just going to keep on uh, looking at... Infected by psychoanalysis. Infected by psychoanalysis regards every form of exuberance and neurotic excess and classifies mere happiness under the clinical and diagnostic term euphoria. Interesting. Adam and Eve kids. Some of the notes just keep on looking at my marginalia and animism, dialectical materialism. Some of the scribbling in here, it almost drives me crazy. I just think I just let myself go. I, I think that um, I just that's a good thing for me. Usually I underline meticulously. I use like a um, ID card or library card or type of credit card thing or a ruler to underline nicely with a mechanical pencil and annotate. A part of the problem with that, though, is that the mechanical pencil can eventually over time fade or rub away. Um, it's better with like a black pen with a fine point. But here, I think that's cool because I think I did a lot of just kind of introspection as reading this stuff. Max Mueller, Friedrich Max Mueller, the linguist, um, Oriental Scholarship. I, I, I like his writings quite a bit. Ships from a German Workshop is very interesting. I now despise Berkeley and Oakland from the standpoint of Westernly Sausalito and Mount Tama. Tomal Pius, upon whose beneficent slopes I am now riding. <laughs> Quiet Forested Valley. He mentions Vedanta. The concept of a child, an invention of the Industrial Revolution before children were small, considered small adults. Protestant religion and the industrial bourgeoisie, disciplinium arcanum, psychedelic drugs, the jewel of the lotus, Mane Padma, Om Mane Padme Om, psychological structure, the bathroom at Rowan Tree College, or Cottage, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Tentum Religio, 
the Crusades, the Holy Inquisition, the Puritan Revolution, the Thirty Years' War. Just going to move more quickly. I don't want to make this video too long. But I uh, must good things. Smoking cigars and pipes and gardens and forests and oceans of jewels and paintings of colorful clothes and of finely bound and printed books. If I were extremely rich, I would collect in in Kunabola of rare editions, Japanese swords, Tibetan jewelry, Persian miniatures, Celtic illuminated manuscripts, Chinese painting and calligraphies, embroideries and textiles from India, images of Buddhas, Oriental carpets, Navajo necklaces, limages enamels, and venerable wines from France. Yet there have been two or three times in my life when I have abandoned almost all possessions and go it alone. Uh, it's happened to me. I can even relate even now. Very interesting. Um, I've also had an attraction to being a no-strings-attached Taoist wanderer in the mountains. <clears throat> Cloud hidden, whereabouts unknown. And when the mood suits me, I also like to practice Buddhist meditation in the Zen and t Tibetan Zogchen style, which is simply sitting quietly or walking rhythmically without thoughts or verbalizations in your head. Chinese sages, poets, scriptures in Chinese, genuflections, Elizabeth in English... It might as well be Sanskrit. Omnibus. <laughs> Uncle Harry's tobacco shop was a warm, woodsily odiferous place, which the worshipful and honorable companies of goldsmiths, saddlers, merchant tailors, and ventineers bought tobacco for their superb dinners. Eaten cigarettes made... Of Yindley Leaf from Asia Minor, Dunghill, Dunhill Cedar Room, high tea, scones and globs, Hindu or Buddhist mantras. Jesus, the the Japanese artist Saburo Hasagawa once rather slyly remarked to me, you must always remember that one of the main differences between Buddhism and Christianity is that Jesus was the son of a carpenter and Buddha was the son of a king. Clergy are like manure, excellent when spread all over the country while doing their work, but when gathered together in a heap, they stink. I wrote, excellent, ha ha ha, next to that. Back here, there's some mention of Dogen's ritual style, brown rice, Bode Harma, Wittgenstein. Wittgenstein put it this way, we feel that even if all possible scientific questions be answered, the problem of life has still not been touched at all. Of course, there is then no question left. And just this is the answer. The solution to the problem of life is seen as vanishing from this problem. Is not this the reason why men to whom, after long doubting the sense of life became clear, could not then say wherein the sense consisted? Live in the present. Academy of Asian Studies, Fencing Archery Judo, D.T. Suzuki, Lao Tzu, Chang Tzu, Yoga Meditation, Vibration of the Universe. The Esalon Institute, that's interesting. Eldridge Cleaver, Comparative Religion, Quiet Guru, Troubled Young, Japan, Became a Zen Priest, Roshi, Tantric Yoga, Zen, and just about anything they had to offer. The author tends, therefore, to be an individualist in politics and the American scene, finds it hard to decide whether the right wing or the left constitutes the greater threat to his liberty. Thus, in one sense, in one word, I am apolitical. I cannot find enthusiasm for any particular ideology, party, state, or nation, and I believe, furthermore, that these are obsolete types of organization which increasingly work against the real interests of real people. On the other hand, I'm... Intensely interested in specific political and economic problems and de developing an ecologically sound technology and getting it understood that the dollar is something 
like an inch, not wealth, but a measure of wealth, and showing that people must be paid for work done on their behalf by machinery and a drastic reform of prisons and mental hospitals. Philosopher's Mill, giving lectures, conducting seminars and formal conferences, more of a physician than a minister, and later to keep them in permanent following. Yeah, so this has been fun. Um, what did I put here? Research some of these as well as of their written works. And I think these are different authors that he mentions. Oh, well, Alan Gissenberg, of course. Different Buddhist authors, just different um, interesting uh, authors that he mentions. Harvard, he intended to become a Trappist monk. I consider that such a remarkably cultured young man was much more of a Benedictine than a Trappist. For most Benedictines I have known have an urbane and assured serenity, which comes both from being the oldest in the church and from their preoccupations with scholarship. Zen Catholicism, Chung Tzu's Taoism, Coyoto, Dom, Alred was going to see the Dalai Lama in India, and on his way he was going to a discussion with several of the great Buddhist priests of Japan. Not to convert, but to learn, and it seems that those who go deeply into almost any of the great spiritual traditions come to the same place and find themselves talking the same language. <clears throat> it's completely thrashed. Yeah, so that was just a look at... A book that I've always found interesting, an autobiography that obviously I seem to have liked quite a bit. I mean, maybe I need a new edition. Probably if someone even gave me one or sent me one for free, I'd still prefer this one. It's just almost magical. Um, it's been with me for some time and I've wrote it again and again. So obviously I find a lot of what he talks about to be very interesting. So just for something different, uh, yeah, Alan Watts, In My Own Way, an autobiography. This is Justin William Savoy. I thank you so much for joining me. There are some more books that I'm looking forward to reviewing and providing some more content for you. Um, it is early December and things are kind of strange in our world, but I would encourage you to take up positive pursuits. I love reading and I love books and it's a great coping mechanism as well and a good way to spend time. Um, as always, you can reach me at SavoyJustin123 at gmail.com. S-U-V-O-Y-J-U-S-T-I-N-1-2-3 at gmail.com. Thank you so much for joining me, and I look forward to uploading more videos soon. Okay, bye.